I do, I do want to ask about women and Islam because this is something uh, we've had some contributions from the floor on that and women wearing their veils and so on. I mean, this is something which does exercise a great deal of uh, debate. The fact that a lot of people feel that um, you can't be a Muslim woman and enjoy certain freedoms. How, how do you address that? No, I, I think that we have to acknowledge the fact that there are problems, but we also have to acknowledge the fact that things are evolving, that there is and there are Muslim women in Europe today who are in leaders in the leadership and coming with new interpretation. When it comes, for example, something which is very simple about the headscarf, it's against Islam to impose it, it's against human rights to impose to take it off. This should be the point, and this is why we should be uh, in agreement. Second point, against forced marriages. We had campaigns in Europe against forced marriages. And then when it comes to anything which has to do with uh, 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 reading the text, being able to come and to get a sense of uh, autonomy for women, this is happening. So the, I would say that in some country, you wear the headscarf, by definition, you can't, you can't be a free Muslim women because the way you dress. I think it's wrong. Let the people decide and let them speak for themselves and listen. All right, listen, listen because sometimes they speak and they are not listening. Yeah, there's, a, a there's a big debate. Yeah, I want to talk yeah. about women. There's no, a big I, debate. I, I have yeah. a direct question to, to Tariq. What will you do if you find out that a woman is not wearing that, uh, that dress uh, by her own choice? What, what will your uh, opinion be? It happened. And I did it to, and I said it to some of the, at least now in my mind there are two, who asked me about the fact I don't want to wear it and this is imposed by my father and once by my mother I said resist. Don't accept something which is against your freedom because it has to be your choice and it's an act of faith. So in the dig for the dignity of Muslims you have to resist. In Europe, isn't there? In France, in particular, about the full, the niqab, the full face veil, and even people like Rashida Dati, the former French cabinet minister, has said that she is opposed to that. But um, Douglas, I want to ask you: You heard some of the people from the floor there, the woman complaining about attacks on her because she's described as a scarfy because she wears a head veil. I mean, that is something that you would regret. I mean, that doesn't promote social course, nobody, cohesion. Nobody, does it? nobody thinks that any physical attacks or any such thing could be, could be uh, uh, a good thing to happen. Of course not. Of course there are, let's not, but let's not, let's make, sure, let's make sure we're right. talking about prejudice. Prejudice though. exists in society. Let's just be absolutely clear this is an the audience. Prejudice undoubtedly exists in this society. It exists across racial groups, including from minorities to other minorities after all, which is one of the things we see increasingly in Britain these days. And it is also the case that people, in particularly famously lower socioeconomic groups, are likely to feel hatred for other groups. That is one of the things that has to be tackled, and everyone, I think, in this hall, I'm sure, we're in agreement that that should be tackled. But do not mix up somebody, a thug, a racist, and so on, attacking somebody in a street with the right of Fleming and me to say what we see in the Quran, what we think of Muhammad, and maybe even asserting our right to say so. OK, all right. Now... All right, the gentleman here. I, I think part of the issue here is that um, at the point where Europe is becoming increasingly secular, there's a group of people who have a tenacious belief in God. And I, I just wonder whether or not if we had 16 million evangelical Americans moved here, we, we, I'd feel exactly the same about that. It's, I don't think it's anything to do with race. It's just Okay, let's take some from upstairs, yeah. The biggest point for me is double standards. Um, I think European double standards is the biggest problem. I mean, I mean, you talk of freedom of expression, and yet, and yet you kind of like compromise it through, through, through banning of, 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 of minarets. But, but the point is, okay, people voted for it, fair enough. But the point is, you shouldn't compromise you shouldn't give people like, you, you, you can discuss taxes, you can discuss anything, but freedom of expression, that is not something that is up for tax. And it's this double standards that the West sort of holds right, okay. that. You're referring to that referendum in Switzerland about. Yeah. Uh, and, and quite a lot of them, like the one in France, uh, banning burqas. Right, okay. Gentlemen there. Um, my name's Henry Hogger, I'm a former British diplomat in the Arab world. I worked until uh, fairly recently for something called the Muslim West Facts Project, which. Uh, is an exercise to publicize the findings of a, a, some Gallup polling on Muslim opinion in Europe. 
One of the most striking features in that, I think, is that um, in Britain, France, and Germany, that uh, Muslims, when asked for their, uh, f how strongly they feel attached to the country that they live in, on the whole, gave stronger answers of loyalty than did the public as a whole, a sample of the public as a whole in those three countries. It seems to me that that's a strong and positive reason for arguing against the motion that uh, uh, Europe is failing its Muslims, but not the reasons which I fear our uh, speakers against the motion have been giving, which rather inclined to blame Islam and Muslims themselves for the problem. Okay, thank you. Please. The gentleman behind you. I'll come to you in a second. I do a lot of work with uh, Christians who've come out from the Middle East, sometimes due to uh, persecution and British policy is frequently behind that. So the world is very complicated. But what worries me is that a lot of the things that people are worried about, about, about Muslim immigrants into Europe um, are very hard attitudes that a lot of the Christians also have. And I think if you are, for instance, from a gay minority in, um, in a lot of those communities, it is very, very worrying. And therefore, we need to be thinking um, slightly bigger than just this Muslim thing, but it is about a, a wider cultural problem. The lady now wearing the hat. Just a comment to you, what you said about women. I think, first of all, that's really misleading because you're getting culture confused with religion. And if you just take a moment to look into the Quran, you'll see the Quran gave women rights long before women in Europe started burning brass for their own rights. And you'll also see that actually in the Quran, it encourages women to seek education. It protects us from violence and it actually gives us rights in marriage. Right, okay. So you're very wrong. We, um, can I go upstairs? Yeah. I'm Oliver Cam. I'm a leader writer for The Times. Immediately after the Swiss vote to ban construction of minarets, my newspaper published a leading article condemning the vote as inflammatory and a violation of religious liberty. But beyond religious liberty, beyond your sir, right to freedom of association and worship, I cannot understand what possible claim your deeply held religious beliefs have on the rest of society. They are, in my judgment, flawed and incoherent and wrong. Why do I have any reason to respect them, and why do they belong in civic society? Okay. Just some brief ones now. Yeah. I was uh, brought up a Catholic uh, in Ireland. Later on in life, I moved to England, and I converted to Islam. Did my testimony of faith, and I was ostracized by a lot of my friends. As a practicing Muslim was 2003, a few years later, I came out as gay, and I was ostracized by a lot of my Muslim peers. And, I, and then I became very isolated, and I was lonely. I didn't know where I was. And I think the question today really is, it isn't, is Europe, uh, you know, is a feeling it's Muslims, but are we all feeling one another? And that's something that we should really look at. And I'm now in love with a lovely Muslim man and a good relationship, so thanks very much. You've got the microphone, go on. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm just a human being. I don't represent any sort of party or community or anything like that. I respect all religions, and as far as I'm concerned, they've always shown respect for me. And I don't think that it's fair that we should judge an entire religion by a few fringe people, because if you count the Muslim community, it's humongous. Okay. You know, you can't just say, right, right terrorism, okay. and that's it. 